Hello guys. Um, this is a video on gastroparesis. So let's just get started and share the screen. Okay. So these are sort of your, your, your normal stuff when you go into a, uh, and check out any sort of site. It'll just sort of cover the general symptoms and stuff like that of two gastroparesis. That the pyloric um, sphincter has has an issue and affects and that the vagus nerve is in play here nausea and bloating stuff like that now there is some related stuff with GERD which is basically coming from the you know from the gut up through from the top part of the gut small intestine up through and sort of uh, you know and that's also because there's a whole lot of pancreatic, pancreatic enzymes and other stuff and bile in there that connects you back up and stuff like that. But there are issues that are related to the, to this misbehaviour. As I've talked, if, if anybody's seen my video on uh, the stomach issue, that sort of covers this sort of issue related to taurine, that taurine actually improves the regulation improves the acidity level, which is in meats and improves the, but there are other aspects to this problem and we'll get into those now, the related other aspects. Okay, prevalence of gastroparesis in patients with small duct chronic pancreatitis. So there's a high prevalence of this problem with people that have got this problem of, of uh, you know, so it can be, other issues. Let's not forget the the duct, the actual bile duct comes right through the and connects into the with the ducts that are coming out through the pancreas. And so you've got bile, you've got um in you know proteolytic enzymes, a whole lot of things that a lot of this, if it's dysfunctional or that not working properly, can create issues. And this is what they're noticing that people that usually have this sort of condition of um, gastroparesis also have this chronic, um, uh, you know, small, um, small duct chronic pancreatitis. So the most common symptoms of uh, chronic pancreatitis are abdominal pain, diarrhea, and weight loss. The abdominal pains have no consistent pattern and nausea, vomiting commonly occur simultaneously. Gastroparesis may produce similar symptoms. Uh, yes, it does. These sim Similar symptoms may cause diagnostic confusion, particularly with regards to patients with small duct chronic pancreatitis, for whom diagnosis of pancreatic um, chronic pancreatitis is most difficult. We have observed that um, coexisting per, um, gastroparesis may also interfere with the effectiveness of pancreatic enzyme therapy. So, you know, people are using this sort of pancreatic enzyme therapy um, by failing to deliver protease into the duodenum, so that's that top part of the um, of the small intestine that uh, where you know you basically uh, absorb a lot of things like iron, calcium, those sort of things. Um, your fats are, are dealt with there, and therefore not um, restoring feedback control of pancreatic secretion. So we saw in this previous one. You know, there you've got the nervous vagus nerve. Remember, through here, you've got basically where the stomach connects and all this. You've got the bile ducts, you've got the liver here, and all these things are sort of related. They also intersect in that area. So usually, you know, what we call these sort of conditions is a general gut dysfunction, you know, that things are not working properly in that regard. Okay, the aims to estimate the prevalence of gastroparesis in patients with minimal um, change chronic pancreatitis. Okay, methodology. Patients with chronic pancreatitis diagnosed on the basis of secretion test results, but with otherwise normal pancreatic um, imaging, ultra sonographic or computer tomography. Um, finding who also undergone a gastric emptying study were retrospectively identified as abnormal secretion test value were defined as a peak um, by carbon concentration in pancreatic secretion 
of less than 80 MEQ per litre after secretion stimulation. Gastroparesis was defined as an emptying half time greater than 90 minutes. So that's the results. 56 patients were identified, 25 of the 56 patients, 44%, had concomitant gastroparesis and small duct chronic pancreatitis. 24 of these 25 were women and 22 of the 25 were idiopathic small duct chronic pancreatitis. Conclusion, in our referral population, gastroparesis is frequently seen in patients with small duct chronic pancreatitis. For patients with small duct um, disease whose abnormal, abdominal pain does not respond to pancreatic enzyme therapy, which is a sort of a traditional thing that a lot of the naturopaths do. They use pancreatic enzymes and stuff like that. Clinic, clinicians should consider an evaluation for gastroparesis. Okay, so they work out that it's more than likely gastroparesis, but that has not um, sorted the problem. Now, has it? Okay, so let's look at this. Antioxidant treatment with taurine ameliorates, which ameliorates basically means reduces chronic pancreatitis in an experimental rat model. So based on results, recent studies that report depletion of antioxidant capacity in patients with chronic pancreatitis. So there is a strong relationship. And remember, taurine does play an anti um antioxidant um, role as well. Prevention of free radical production has gained importance um, in the antifibrotic treatment strategies in chronic pancreatitis. Remember, fibrosis in all these tissues I've talked about, the kidneys, the lungs, the heart, the br um, brain, um, the liver, you know, taurine is not only a potent antioxidant, but also a potent antifibrotic treatment strategy. The aim of this study was to investigate the effects of taurine on oxidative capacity and fibrosis in experimental chronic rat pancreatitic fibrosis. Okay, so that's the general, um, it was conducted um, in male blah, 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 by, won't go to that, we'll just look at the amount. Taurine was given concentrations of a thousand, so one gram um, per kilo of body weight. So we're talking about very, very high doses. So it'd be like for somebody with 70 kilos, 154 pair, um, uh, pounds would be like, you know, 70. <laughs> so this, we're talking about very high doses. Um, the treatment group were followed as for group one um, and TNBS plus normal saline, uh, group two, plus taurine, group three, ethanol, uh, wonderful. Each group contained 15 animals treated was started after establishing, so they didn't start the treatment until they actually identified chronic pancreatitis. After four weeks of treatment, markers of oxidative stress and the degree of pancreatic fibrosis were determined. So this was mega dosing, um, uh, pretty much taurine. The amount of weight loss was significantly lower in the taurine treated group uh, with chronic pancreatitis. It's 0.002, quite significant. Um, the likelihood of that happening for any other reasons, the unlikely tissue um, at mellow dilatehyde levels were increased and superoxide dismutase and glutathione peroxidase activities decreased. So, well, you know what these are, important intracellular antioxidants, but anyway, were after treatment as well. So we've seen that basically this sort of level of inflammation is coming down. So basically intracellular, you know, antioxidant activity comes down because it's not required. You know, things are not that uh, that bad. So that's pretty the likelihood of that is very remote, especially at that level, 0 0.001. These are pathological scores were also low in taurine treated um, animals with CP. 
So we, we said a reduction in sort of these sort of um, issues of the fibrotic stuff. Taurine treatment improves the degree of oxidative stress and fibrosis. Uh, treatment and fibrosis in rat with CP. Antioxidant treatment may be considered a novel option to alleviate the fibrotic process in chronic pancreatitis. So as we can see, there are issues relating to this. There are related issues. And if we look at gastroparesis and lipid metabolism associated with dysbiosis, there's a lot of research showing that when it comes to taurine, it is central, central to dysbiosis in dealing with it. I've got a follow-on video that actually will deal with that. That's the gut one, the big one that's coming up. That's the one that actually is going to basically blow your mind in terms of the importance of an animal-based diet to ameliorate a lot of these conditions that a lot of people are suffering. Pretty much, you know, the take-home message is eat a steak, eat some seafood, eat anything that's high in taurine, um, potentially have to supplement, you know, in terms of dosages, you may have to do a couple of grams. As always, because of the lowering of blood pressure, usually what it does is it actually, normally it'll actually, if people have high blood pressure, it brings it down to normal. If they got low pressure, it brings it down to normal. It normalizes things, it creates homeostasis because it's an osmolite. The problem is, that a lot of people, that some people nowadays, or quite a few, are on blood pressure meds. So you can only go slow, one, two grams going up and then going to your doctor, getting your blood meds adjusted downwards as a dose, reducing the dose. Um, and that is important because basically we don't want people passing out or even worse, having other you know, acute episodes that would not be very good. So basically, if you're on blood pressure meds, as always, when you're supplementing with taurine, you've got to be very, very careful. And you basically have to use a physician to make adjustments to your meds, your blood pressure meds. As always, this is not medical advice. This is basically my opinion of the research, the science. Um, I'm basically just giving an outline of other mechanisms that are involved in gastroparesis and issues with the gut. So this sort of covers both chronic pancreatitis and also gastroparesis, other relationships. These are intertwined and interconnected. And it's really important that people are aware of um, that it's not only issues in the stomach, but it's actually beyond um, all these systems, your bile, your, um, your bile ducts, um, your pancreas, your stomach, your um, uh, small intestine, um, they're all interconnected and they are all interplaying. There is also bacterial side to this sort of stuff. And there's also other conditions, gut dysbiosis and all that, that are related to this. So it is a multifactorial, but at the heart of it is really eating inappropriate, especially inappropriate foods that really just derange all these organ systems and all these um, digestive sort of uh, um, system. So really taurine's one of your best, um, you know, which is basically eating animal-based foods that will over time ameliorate this. Um, we can speed it up with, with taurine supplementation, but fundamentally, if you want to, if you want to uh, reverse a lot of these issues, you've got to basically be on a species appropriate diet. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. See you.